My name is Joyce Montesinos, and I will be giving my oral report today on John Watson. Education is an important part of our society. There have been many who have shaped our education and system into what it is today for the good and for the bad. Mostly good, though. This uh, oral report will look at the life of John Watson. It will also explore his studies and theories in psychology and his engrossment in studying behaviorism and his contribution to education. John Watson was born on the 9th of January in 1878 to his father, Pickens Watson, and to his mother, Kaisa Watson. He grew up in Greensville, South Carolina. Now his mother encouraged him to to be good, to do good. She wanted him to be a good Christian and to uh, do well in school. While his dad, on the other hand, was bad. His dad was bad. He drank a lot and then he had a lot of run-ins with the law and John Watson pretty much followed the footsteps of his father. He he modeled the behavior of his father. And what makes this significant is the fact that the modeling not only impacted Watson's personal life, but it also uh, gave him interest in studying behaviorism. When Watson was 13, his father had an affair and left the family. Uh, Watson then continued to rebel against his mother, and he was arrested two different, on two different occasions for violence. He assaulted neighborhood children because they were black, and he often disrespected his teachers by disrupting class. However, at the age of 16, things began to change. He was accepted into Furman University, and he was 16 when he was accepted into Furman University, and his teacher uh, he had a teacher there named Gordon Moore who introduced Watson to the subject of psychology and so he began to be dedicated in his studies. Now Watson attended Furman for five years, graduated with his master's and, in 1900 and then he went on to continue his education in the University of Chicago and what I find really interesting is he was 25 when he earned his PhD in psychology and neurology. I just have one thing to say about that. Wow, like he's 25 and he's got his PhD. I think that's incredible. Now, he stayed at the University of Chicago as an assistant to the teacher, as an assistant and then later as a teacher. Now, Watson actually invented the term behaviorism. He was the one that wanted to separate behaviorism from the study of behaviors from the study of consciousness, which was a popular study back then in his day. Now Watson quickly uh, dated one of his students and married her. Her name was Mary Amelia Ikes and they had two children together. Now some say that he continued to model the behavior of his father um, because due to his extramarital affairs he had to leave the University of Chicago but he began teaching at John Hopkins University. Um, while he was there he taught psychology and he also performed some psychological experiments. The one he's most famous for is the study that is called Little Albert. Now the study of Little Albert um, was conducted and it was to study behaviorism it was conducted on a nine-month-old named Albert, and in the study, he ran the study with his student and future wife, uh, Rosalie, Rosalie <laughs> Rayner, and they conducted the study in four phases. So the first phase, um, they, they both introduced objects to Albert. The objects were toys, uh, white cotton balls, white rabbits, white rats, maybe there was a dog, I think, and or I know there was a dog, I read it. So, But these objects were introduced to Albert to study his, if there was any aspects of fear, or any signs of fear, I mean. In the second phase, these objects were presented again to Albert, but this time they were come to 
accompanied with a loud noise. And so what resulted was that he was afraid of these objects when he saw them. Now in the third phase, the environment changed as the objects were presented. So if he was presented a rat in a dark room, maybe he was now presented the rat in a light room where he could see it. So what happened was in the third stage, as the objects were presented, the fear started to subside. By the fourth phase, the fear was detached. Watson claimed that this study of little Albert proved that fear can be conditioned and so can the remedy. Therefore, behaviors can be conditioned, but behaviors can also be, be rectified. Now, Watson was quoted in the article, The Rabbit Problem, What Did John Watson Really Do? And the quote goes as this, Suppose your child shows a deep-seated fear of a rabbit. When all other methods fail, try this method. Just as the child sees its food, let someone show the rabbit as far away as possible. Then bring it a little nearer. When the child begins to show fear, stop the advance. Repeat this every day. Soon the child can tolerate the rabbit on the table and then in its lap. We call this process unconditioning. I think I personally think that this experiment is relevant to education. Children and people come from all walks of life, and there are reasons behind all of their behaviors. This does not mean, however, that those behaviors are permanent. Watson contributed to education by introducing the idea of variant stimuli to adjust behavior. Teachers can apply this theory in their lives, or in their teaching, and in their lives, in their teaching through the language they use with their students. Uh, in the article Lewin Linguistic Acts, Teachers Using the Classroom, Verbal Stimuli, the author and in Cur Curodz says this concerning the language of teachers. With the words they choose, teachers may support students or create emotional barriers for their learning. Behavior is something learned and it is something that can be modeled and it can be changed. It is vital that teachers exercise caution in the environment they provide each student. I have personally been affected by this philosophy in both, in both the good and the bad. I struggled with math for many years because one of my grade school teachers lost patience with me and refused to help me understand certain concepts in math. It, wasn't, it was not until many years later that I was able to overcome that math wall to understand those concepts that had evaded me for so long. Uh, it took a teacher that had foresight and patience to adapt their teaching in a way that I could understand. And so that's the message I want to leave you guys with, that Watson contributed to education to let teachers know that they can use his findings to adapt their teaching. They can create an environment where they'll support learning. And that's my report on John Watson. I hope you enjoyed it.